everyone, today I am going to show you how I play the end of the prelude. Be aware that there are a lot of different ways to do this. There is no one perfect right way, no matter what anyone tells you. There are a lot of different opinions, uh, several different bowings, different fingerings that you can use. Out of all of the different choices, this is what I do. You do not have to do what I do. Also, there are different tempos that you can take at the ending. I tend to take it probably a little bit too fast just because I have so much fun playing it, but probably take it a little bit slower than what I generally do. The best way to play and memorize the end of this piece is to think in terms of patterns. So you have um, this little intro or transition part that goes into the end. Four, three, one, and then three, open A, open, open A, one, open A, three, open A. That's what it would sound like if you didn't go over to the open A string. Three, open, one, three. But between those um, three, open, one, three, you insert the open A's. Now here is the next pattern that you're going to play three times. Four, one, three, open. But you're going to also insert the open A's in between those as well. Four, one, three, open. Four, one, three, open. And throughout all of this, you are slurring two notes at a time. So then you repeat that pattern two more times. So putting together the transition and those three sections. Now from here, you're still going to alternate between the D string and the A string. So one, and you're going to shift up here, one goes on F sharp. Then you're going to put two on G, and then you're going to shift up and put one on A. And remember that you're alternating to the open A string all throughout this part. So here is E to A, F sharp to A, G to A, and then we shift up, we put one in fourth position on A, and they should be the exact same note. And then three. So if you notice, we just went up a scale on the D string, but we just alternated. So one, one, two, one, three. Slurring two in each bow, still, and alternating with the open A string. So after you do your scale, you're gonna go back to open D. But you're gonna leave your hand in fourth position, finger one. Now after you play that, you're gonna shift up and you're gonna put one on B. This is your new anchor. You're gonna do one, open, two, open. You're gonna play open D again. And you're gonna finish it out one two three and I love this part because it's um, it goes in levels so you're building each time so the first time let's see it's just finger one and then the next time it's oh one two and then the third time it's three so see how it keeps it adds on each time after you've finished building, you're going to kind of even out and alternate between fingers one, open, two, open, one, open, two, open. And if you are not already, you definitely need to be following along with your music. There is no way that I'm going to be able to help you memorize the ending of this in just one video so i i hope that you're looking at your music at this point you're going to gradually work your way down um so that's the alternating spot that i just showed you now we're going to move back to fourth position we're going to alternate between one and three so we were alternating between one and two now we're moving back we're alternating between one and three and now we're gonna move back again and alternate between one and three again with one on G and three on A. 
Now we're going to move back again. Like I said, we're moving back, we're moving down. We're going to alternate between one and two. And then we're going to alternate between one and three again. This whole time alternating one and two, one and three, one and three again, and then one and two, um, and then one and three again. And then we're back to open D. So again, please be reading the music as we're going. Um, I'm just showing you general patterns. You definitely will need to look at the notes as you're playing. Um, and again, we're slurring two notes in every bow as we go through this entire section. So now, once we are back to open D, we're back on our level ground. We're gonna do a really cool part. Again, only slurring two notes in each bow. The best way to memorize this section is to think about just doing a chromatic scale up the D string first, then we transition over to the A, we go up, and throughout that chromatic scale, you will be alternating with, instead of the open A string, the open D string. So, one on E, two on F, one on F sharp, two on G, three on G sharp, open A, finger one on B flat, then shift up, play finger one on B natural, two on C, one on C sharp, two on D, three on D sharp, E, finger one, two on F natural, three on F sharp, and then you're here, finger four in fourth position on G. Because we're alternating with open D string, it's going to sound like this. And hopefully that makes sense. Now a really good way to practice this very last section is to practice in double stops. So... So you start out by going, so that's your first double stop that you want to practice. It's four on G and three on B. And then of course, when you're actually playing how it's written, you're going to add in the open D string. But just practicing the double stops first, it'll be four on G, three on B. And really lock those pitches in so that it's as in tune as you can get it. And let's see, the bowing I do, there are different ones that you can do, but... And then this next one, here would be your next double stop to practice. And again, whenever you're playing it according to how it's written, you do add in the open D as well. Now this next part... That's pretty tricky to get in tune. Um, and again, alternate with open D. And then the last chord, you just switch your fingers over. So instead of three going on the A string and four going on the D string, three goes on the D string and four goes on the A string. And this is still in fourth position. And that is the nice thing about this ending. That is entirely in fourth position. There's nothing too crazy up here. It's very, um, very simple. <laughs> Now the bowing for this end part is four in a bow, then two in a bow, two in a bow, four in a bow, two in a bow, two in a bow, four in a bow, and it continu continues in that pattern. <laughs> chord you want to do two bottom two strings and then top two strings then add vibrato and save your bow on the top two strings like that now that we've reached the end i'm going to play the entire last section for you slowly under tempo so that you can maybe play along follow along with your music and i will talk you through as we go so the first three notes here are slurred all up bow <laughs> that again. Now head up your scale. Now 
build. Build. Come away. Level out. Now go back down. Alternating. One. Here we go up bow and we go up our chromatic scale. Now we're in fourth position, four three. Four one. those, play the bottom two notes together, top two notes. Save your bow. And that is how you play the end section of the prelude. Again, I really hope that you followed along with your music and of course um, be aware that there are other ways to play this. I really hope that today's video helped. If you have any additional questions, put those in the comment section below. As always, love what you do, practice well, share it with others. Thank you for watching today's video and keep an eye out for next week's video.